Welcome to Tent Talk, the podcast with Nancy McCrady, where we talk about life under the big tent of God's presence and the provoking process of discipleship. Here we go. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Tent Talk. This is Nancy McCrady. In this uh, short series of conversations on perseverance, I pray that you'll be encouraged to stay in this long distance race, to not grit your teeth, but to live in the glory strength that he gives us. Let this become real in your everyday life as you simply put one foot in front of the other. So take a listen, share with others, and thank you for being a part of the podcast of Nancy McCready Ministries, Tent Talk. All right, here we are, Percy 2.0, Perseverance. Now, we heard in the episode previously, right, that it's all from Jesus, in Jesus, and it's for Jesus. So I want to read today in Perseverance out of Hebrews 12 from the Message Bible. It says, Do you see what this means, all these pioneers who blazed the way, all these veterans cheering us on? It means we'd better get on with it. Strip down, start running, and never quit. No extra spiritual fat, no parasitic sins. Keep your eyes on Jesus, who both began and finished this race we're in. Study how he did it, because he never lost sight of where he was headed, that exhilarating finish in and with God. He could put up with anything along the way, cross, shame, whatever. And now he's there, in the place of honor, right alongside God. When you find yourselves flagging in your faith, go over that story again, item by item, that long litany of hostility he plowed through. That will shoot adrenaline into your souls. In this all-out match against sin, others have suffered far worse than you, to say nothing of what Jesus went through, all that bloodshed. So don't feel sorry for yourselves. Or have you forgotten how good parents treat children and that God regards you as his children? My dear child, don't shrug off, disregard, or discount God's discipline. But don't be crushed by it either. It's the child he loves that he disciplines. The child he embraces, he also corrects. God is educating you. That's why you must never drop out. He's treating you as dear children. This trouble you're in isn't punishment. It's training, the normal experience of children. Only irresponsible parents leave children to fend for themselves. Would you prefer an irresponsible God? We respect our own parents for training and not spoiling us. So why not embrace God's training so we can truly live? While we were children, our parents did what seemed best to them. But God is doing what is best for us, training us to live God's holy best. At the time, discipline isn't much fun. It always feels like it's going against the grain. Later, of course, it pays off handsomely, for it's the well-trained who find themselves mature in their relationship with God. So don't sit around on your hands, no more dragging your feet. Clear the path for long-distance runners so no one will trip and fall, so no one will step in a hole and sprain an ankle. Help each other out and run for it. Work at getting along with each other and with God. Otherwise, you'll never get so much as a glimpse of God. Make sure no one gets left out of God's generosity. Keep a sharp eye out for weeds of bitter discontent. A thistle or two gone to seed can ruin a whole garden in no time. Watch out for the Esau syndrome, trading away God's lifelong gift in order to satisfy a short-term appetite. You well know how Esau later regretted that impulsive act and wanted God's blessing, but by then it was too late, tears or no tears. Unlike your ancestors, you didn't come to Mount Sinai, all that volcanic blaze and earth-shaking rumble to hear God speak, the ear-splitting words and soul-shaking message terrified them, and they begged him to stop. 
When they heard the words, if an animal touches the mountain, it's as good as dead, they were afraid to move. Even Moses was terrified. No, that's not your experience at all. You've come to Mount Zion, the city where the living God resides. The invisible Jerusalem is populated by throngs of festive angels and Christian citizens. It is the city where God is judge, with judgments that make us just. You've come to Jesus, who presents us with a new covenant, a fresh charter from God. He is the mediator of this covenant. The murder of Jesus, unlike Abel's, a homicide that cried out for vengeance, became a proclamation of grace. So don't turn a deaf ear to these gracious words. If those who ignored earthly warnings didn't get away with it, what will happen to us if we turn our backs on heavenly warnings? His voice that time shook the earth to its foundations. This time, he's told us this quite plainly, he'll also rock the heavens. One last shaking from top to bottom, stem to stern. The phrase, one last shaking, means a thorough house cleaning, getting rid of all the historical and religious junk so that the unshakable essentials stand clear and uncluttered. Do you see what we've got? An unshakable kingdom And do you see how thankful we must be? Not only thankful, but brimming with worship, deeply reverent before God. For God is not an indifferent bystander. He's actively cleaning house, torching all that needs to burn. And he won't quit until it's all cleansed. God himself is fire. Wow, I got into chapter 12 there and couldn't stop reading. And I know I've read Hebrews 12 many times here, and I don't apologize for repeating. But this is where, from the beginning of chapter 12 to the end of it, we see why such a need for Percy. (laughs) Why such a need for perseverance? Oh, my friends, first of all, we must understand there are many who have gone before us. There will be those who come after us. Never let self-pity come in. Because in persevering, my friends, pity is going to definitely show up, right? Because you think, oh, I'm in this long haul race. Oh, look at how long it's been. Oh, look at all that I'm having to endure and to face. And then breaks in is I don't think anybody's probably had to endure it quite like me. And we we don't recognize sometimes the whisperings of pity that come in the uh, route of perseverance. Hmm? Come on now. No, we're not the only ones. We don't have it worse than someone else. There's a whole crowd of witnesses cheering us on those veterans, right, who blazed a trail. Now, come on now. We're blazing a trail for those who will come after us, even right now, those who are walking with us. But let's all be clear that not just the veterans, right, and not just us and those that will come after, but come on, we're in, right, the train in the way of the greatest trailblazer of all time, Jesus himself, who endured all, everything that the veterans have endured and lived through, everything we are living through, everything that those coming after us will live through. He's already born under that. He has tasted death for every person. He has borne the sins of all. He has endured all the hostility, right? It's not about, um, you know, buck up and don't, you know, Don't pity yourself, you know, look at Jesus and see that all that he endured. Now, can't you endure a little for him? (laughs) No, it's not out of that. It's come on. The one who has endured all lives in you. So you can endure your part of the way. You're part of that path of perseverance. You can endure because he has and now he's come back and he's given you your portion of perseverance in his very nature you have your portion so trust me he's had pity love and mercy upon you right it's okay to have the need for pity as long as you take it to him right because pity is going to show up my friends the need for pity is going to show up as you persevere But we must understand, oh, he's had pity upon us because he says, listen, I know what it is to endure your part of the race because I've already done it. And now I've turned around and I've given you all of your portion of my victory. Now drink of that. Let that meet your need. And my friends, when your need is met by him, it will never produce pity 
uh, that remains. It will never create pride about you're the one who's really endured. And if people only knew what you had endured, how impressed they would be. No, 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 my friends. We are not getting self-pity. We are receiving everything we need to finish our race from him, the person of Jesus. That's who the veterans drew from. That's who the future generations will draw from. But come on, let's draw from him today as we persevere, right? As we stay with it, as we study him, not so we can imitate him so that we can learn how to cooperate with him, right? And stay with him in this. So there's your encouragement for today. And I hope that it continues you on in this very deep relational race that we're in. Our relationship with him, our relationship with others. But come on now, you need to have a relationship with yourself, (laughs) right? Come on now, relate to yourself through him. Hmm? And don't let any other whispering voice come in to take you away from him as you run your race right now, today. I love you all. We'll talk soon. For more information on Nancy, please visit nancymccrady.com or follow her on social media at nbmccrady.com.